Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we give praise, honor, and glory to your beautiful name. Thank you for your wonders. Thank you for the miracles that you're doing. Even this night, oh God, you're doing miraculous things in the name of Jesus Christ. You are healing the sick, sick in the family, sick in the hospital. In the name of the Lord, those that were uh, uh, God Almighty are uh, ordained to die from the kingdom of darkness, we call them back in the name of the Lord. The marriages that were to die oh, this month of September, we we declare life. We speak life to those marriages and we decree no death in the name of the Lord. We pray that, Father, you touch your people, you touch men, you touch women. You touch even their children in the mighty name of the Lord. We pray through this altar of divine marriage program. The Lord God, families will be revived. They will be restored. We release life. We release life of Christ. We release peace. We release the grace. The grace of God upon each and every family. Those that are jobless, God. May you release divine ideas in Jesus' mighty name. Let businesses be born. Let revival strike every household. That men and women shall be full of the Holy Ghost. They shall serve God. They shall honor God. In the name of the Lord, we in decree reverse where there was perversion. We in decree in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There shall be, there shall be sanity. In the name of the Lord, we call men back to their place. We call women back to their position. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, whatever the enemy and, and, and attacked, we rebuke you Satan. You have no power in every marriage that God ordained that God has put in place in the very mighty name of Jesus. Father, arise tonight and let the enemies of marriages scatter in Jesus' mighty name. And we pray that you will arise and show us mercy for this is the set time in the name of the Lord. Oh, the morning may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I speak morning. I speak. Let there, let there be dawn in every marriage in the very mighty name of the Lord. Where there was dryness. We speak life. We speak life of Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, those that, are, those that are in the valley of dryness, Lord, the way Ezekiel oh, spoke and prophesied to the dry bones and and great army came forth. We decree in every family that there shall be life, there shall be restoration, there shall be revival. In the very mighty name of the Lord, those that are uh, their companies as as collapsed during this pandemic, God, you are able to turn things around. Let everything work in favor. Ah, Lord, upon them that wait upon you. Tonight we commit this program to you. Have your way, Lord, and cause your name to be glorified. May you use us as your vessels of honor to speak your will. And Lord, let there be a change, a remarkable change that will cause your name, your beautiful name to be exalted. We bless you and we exalt you. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> the Lord bless amen. you. You may not... Uh, we may not hear you saying amen, but amen, it is something... Uh, you can something, type it. Yes, you can type an amen mm. because you are writing a statement. Let it be so uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. So I want to believe God every declaration that we have made by faith, every prophetic word that the Lord has released. Uh, may it be so in your life in the name of Jesus. And I want to tell you, uh, uh, you are you are qualified for that as long as you receive this information and you believe because spiritual things are spiritually caught. They are spiritually received. So you, you are supposed just to believe God that you will not um, be grounded forever. You cannot be stagnated forever. You cannot um, go through relationships that are heartbreaking forever. A time comes and God just decides to comfort you as he has spoken in his word in uh, Isaiah 40. He can comfort you. He can command comfort. And whenever he commands comfort, nobody can go contrary to the will of God. We are talking about uh, taking care of each other in marriage. Taking care of each other in marriage. Is it in order to take care of each other? We said there are people who married through, uh, having that vision and the end that desire that I will take care for you. I will take care for you uh, in sicknesses, in health, uh, in, all, in, all, in all changes of life. But something just happened. Many other things came in. Businesses came. Children came. Wealth came. Even some poverty came. And you, 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 you shifted. And you're so worried. 
you, you have shifted from the divine cause and what you're taking care of it is something that uh, is not adding any value in your life it is always important it is always in order that for the days or months or weeks or years that you have been in that marriage you should add value to your spouse you should yeah. add value to your husband you should add value to your wife uh, sometimes uh, well, back when we were growing, you, you were just looking for one month. You can just watch and see if uh, the woman has been married and she begins to glow and the man begins to glow. Uh, you, you say those, those people are taking care of each other. But within a very short time when you just marry and you begin to wither, because before everything with us, it is joy that with us first. That is Joel chapter number 1 and verse number 12. If joy with us, all other things with us. If joy with us, finances will with us, everything will with us. So it is, it is our responsibility as uh, couples to take care of each other. And when we are talking uh, about taking care of each other, there are some people who say, when I will be well, when we will be well up in life, this is the time I will begin to take care of my wife, I will be taking her to places, I will be taking her... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> some say I'll take you to Dubai, so others to Bahamas and uh, those other places you know them. I don't want to mention them here. Uh, th there are some nations that have good sites and uh, when you go there, those, you, you just have those memories. If you cannot even escort your wife or your husband when he or she is just going uh, to the office or that just uh, a business, no matter how small it is, if you don't see the reason of even welcoming this person, I want to tell you, even when you, 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 you be up there, you have excuses. If you cannot take care of your partner when you are having that kind of income, as little as it, it, it is, that kind of salary that you are getting, if you cannot uh, uh, put your wife, your husband to be part of the priority, uh, when I'm talking about that, I'm just being reminded of that lady who said, I can change a husband, but I cannot change my mother. So my husband is priority number 10. If your husband is priority number 10, 3, 5, uh, you will forget him. If your wife, she becomes a priority number 6, 7, 8, or even 3, it is very easy to forget her. So when we are talking about taking care of each other, it is having the other person in your mind, mm. having the other person in your heart. When, when you think still this person is part of you, it is part of your system, you want to know how, how, how the other, the other the, your, your husband is faring on. Even if you slept in the same bed, when you wake up, you ask him, darling, did you sleep well? Did you sleep well? Because this person might, might be having a night of being terrorized by the forces of darkness and you are just snoring and this person could even just try to wake you up but you are in a deadly or a deep sleep so when you are we are talking about taking care of each other it is showing concern you show that you are concerned you you show the other person that you are part of me you are you're in my mind, you're in my heart. When you're doing some things, you are, you're just considering this person. And many couples have forgotten that. They have forgotten that. They even some, some men who can come home and they tell the wife, prepare the children, I want to go with them around. And the wife is like, I am. She will prepare the kids and you go with the kids to take them around the town or to, to see some things, to view some sceneries. And this woman will just be at home and wondering, where, where, where is my, where, where, where do I belong? So there are people who are lost. They in their, their own marriages, but lost. Because they have a lot of questions that they cannot answer. Why? What they were uh, uh, enjoying when they were starting their marriage, they no longer see it. Or even those promises that they weren't given, they have not seen even one. And that is why I believe God detaches himself from men. <laughs> he says in the book of Numbers, uh, I believe it is 9.23 or 23 verse 9. Numbers 9, verse 9. 9. Mm. Yeah, He says, I'm not, I'm not like a man. Mm. You should lie. Yeah, that I should lie. I'm not like a son of man that I promise and fail to fulfill. So God, God in, that, in that portion of scripture, he has detached himself completely because men can give some promises and they can fail. He has 
or also declared in Isaiah 55 that the way our, our minds, our thoughts are far apart, that's how our, our thoughts and his thoughts are far apart. The way is, our ways are not his ways. So uh, you, you should be a man enough to keep your word. To keep your word. And sometimes even the big, big things that you are promising, you may not be able to fulfill them now. But whenever you saw uh, you, that, you, 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 you help your, your, your partner, your wife, she feels that she's part of you. She's, she's part of uh, that system. You are keeping her in everything that you are doing. She'll, she'll feel that she belongs to someone. There are, there are women who feel that they don't, they don't have a sense of belonging. There are men the same way who feel that they are completely disconnected. Their wives are, are, are just are full of other things, but they are not full of them. They can speak other things. Oh, business, our business. Oh, my business. Oh, my career. Oh, our children. Oh, my people. Ah, uh, even my pastor, where they fellowship, so you can give your you can give your husband all these stories, and when he, he tries to search where he is involved, where he, he has he, 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 he has been considered in whatever you are saying, he, he always looks at you, you shake his hand, and you wonder why is this man shaking his head. So it is always very important. We take care of each other and we say you should be your husband's keeper. You should be your wife's keeper. And this, our reference was in the book of Genesis, chapter number four, chapter number four and verse number nine. And we understood some things that makes many couples not to take care of each other. I'll just, uh, if you are not with us you, and if you are with us, maybe you can visit your notes. If you are taking notes, it's very important. Number one, we understood that many couples, they fail to take care of each other because their love, their, love, their love is challenged. Their love is not growing. If your love grows cold, that is a challenged love. That is a love that is distorted. And the moment you allow your love to grow cold, first of all, before your love towards your spouse grows cold, you have to check how you are relating with God. Because the moment you come out of the presence of God, your love towards God grows cold. God is the supply of love. God is love. So if you disconnect with him, then you are already uh, challenged to love your spouse. And this has become a problem to many uh, people. Our reference book was Proverbs 3 and verse number 3. And of course, First Corinthians chapter number 13, verse 4 to 8, you can just visit the, those scriptures you read at your own time and I pray that the Holy Ghost will help you to have more revelation. Number two, we understood it is failure to compass and cliff. Failure to cliff and compass. It is our responsibility as women. We compass our husbands. We hold them and we win them. Whenever you compass this man, he is secure. He is protected. He is safe. Whenever you win him, he will always fall in love with you every time. He will fall in love with you every time. Whenever you woo him, uh, he will always uh, be focused uh, to your life. And this has uh, made many people, who, especially if you are a lady and you are no longer practicing this. The one of God in the book of Jeremiah, verse Chapter number 31 and verse number 22, the one refers you as a backslidden daughter. As a backslidden daughter. And the Lord is calling you out of your backslidden. Come back to your place. And this is the place of compassing your husband. It is the place of wooing your husband. It is the place of winning your husband. This is not foolishness. This is wisdom from God. I say this is not foolishness, this is wisdom from God. So as a daughter of the kingdom of God, if you are abandoned to do this, if you are abandoned to practice this, you say it, I arrived, I, I am no longer interested. If I, if I, there are people, I, I think that is madness of its kind. You say, when I continue wooing him and compassing him and even winning him, you think that he is the only man. Are you married to two? <laughs> <laughs> he, he will brag, he, he, he will boost, he will become proud. Please, it is always important you make that man to feel that he is a man. And this is by your activities, what, what you involve yourself in the life of this person will, uh, will cause him to be 
uh, a man who is in the right hands. And uh, also, it is the responsibility of man to cleave, to cleave. And that's why God commanded in the book of Genesis 2 and uh, verse 24 that a man shall leave his father and mother and he shall cleave to his wife. So as a man, when you cleave, we understand that uh, your father's house, it is, it is the source of uh, the poison. If you cannot detach from your father's house, you are controlling your marriage, you are, you are doing everything as per the command, as per the dictation of your father's house, then your marriage will not take the version or the shape that the Lord wants. So it, 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 in other words, you are trying to duplicate your father's marriage and there's something that god always wants from every marriage so it is the responsibility of a man to live and cleave to the wife if you can't cleave to your wife then you are committing suicide because there are some things that you will wait to see and you cannot see them in your marriage and uh, also you can read at your own time first the Solonians chapter number five and verse 11 first the Solonians chapter number five and verse 11 it will give you also the information that will help you in uh, in, in in your marriage we understood number three why many couples under uh fail to to, to take care of each other, it is when they fail to exercise unity, when you are not united, when you are not united. And uh, uh, we understood from Psalm 133, Psalm 133, when brethren dwell together in harmony, uh, it is like an anointing oil running from the, uh, the head of Aaron towards his beard, then the anointing flows through his garment and there the word says there god commands blessing so uh there are many families that are not enjoying the commanded blessing understand it's not the will of god for us to run after blessings deuteronomy 28 from verse number one if you will diligently obey the word of god you anchor to his voice to his commandment then he will lift you above all other nations and from there, the one says, and these blessings shall follow you. So whenever you hearken to the word of God, you hearken to the voice of God, you obey his commandment, then the blessings begin to run after you and overtake you. It is not for us to run after blessings. It is uh, for us to obey God, to walk as per his word, then the blessings will, will follow us and overtake us. But what is happening? Uh, many people, and especially in marriage, in, in marriage, there are many people, they have been married for 10 years, but still they are saying our marriage is new. Our marriage is new. We have never settled because our marriage is new since the time we married. Uh, it's like Elm broke loose. We are just trusting God for settlement for... Please watch out how you are doing. Watch out your relationship with God and just fix, fix your eyes onto him. He will, whenever you are united, whenever you are united, God is always uh, where there is unity. That is why the Trinity, when it comes to Trinity, there is that uniform. There is that unity. God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. And that's why even when Jesus was 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 uh, departing when he was going to heaven and when he prayed for his disciples, he, he said that he has, he, has, he has released the ones that God has uh, and given unto him, to uh, his disciples. And uh, he, he said the way the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost are united, that is what he prayed for the disciples. So as a couple, what is very important, it is unity. Unity, unit of purpose, unity of vision, unit of everything. You are united. You are not divided. You are not two institutions. You are not two, uh, two, two, two people who are trying to do things differently. You have a common goal, and this will help us. Will help us to enjoy the blessings of God. Our, 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 our reference book was in the book of Matthew, chapter number nineteen, verse six, and Ephesians, chapter number four, verse two and three, and Ecclesiastes chapter number four verse nine and twelve please these these messages are still circulating you can just visit uh apostle in, in in your channel uh in the youtube and you can subscribe you get all this information but we are doing the recap the lord will bless you the lord will do you good 
we also understood something very important what makes many couples not to take care of each other it is when they fail to be humble when humility fails pride takes over understand god always resists the proud and gives more grace to the humble so whenever you allow pride as a woman you become proud as a man you become proud you cannot take care of the other person you become arrogant you rebel and we have we have couples we have wives who are rebellious and rebellion mm -hmm. it's like the sin of witchcraft mm -hmm. so when you become a rebellious man a rebellious husband you are put in the same class in the same category whatever fate witches will suffer the same you will suffer when you allow a uh, pride when you allow rebellion it is rebellion that that shows you there's no need of obeying this man there's no need of submitting there's no need of loving this woman so you rebel against the command of god don't forget ephesians chapter number five from verse number 22 that wives we are supposed to submit to our, our husbands the way uh, the church submit to christ and men are commanded to love but when pride takes over you become a rebel instead of loving you kill instead of loving your wife you begin to defile her through your wrongs or you speak here you 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 destroy and uh instead of building her you just kill her daily and uh, when it comes to woman when pride uh, takes place when you allow pride in your, in, your, in, your, in, your, in your heart you cannot submit you don't see the reason of obeying the word of God and uh, uh, this has made many couples to find themselves in the wrong corner of life but we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you humble yourself before the almighty God so that at the due season at the right time and we believe this is the right time that we are supposed to humble ourselves we humble ourselves. Whenever a couple humbles before God, they begin to do things together. They begin to pray together. They begin to seek God together. Their vision uh, is a common vision. And uh, we, we got this in the book of first letter of Peter, chapter number 5, verse 5 and 6. So please, it is very important. You humble. You, you decide to humble. You decide to humble. First of all, you humble before God. When you humble before God, it will be very easy to humble before your husband. It will be very easy, even the husband, to be a humble man. Understand? Husbands, they are teachers. So if you become arrogant, you are teaching your wife to be arrogant. You are teaching your children to be arrogant. If you become proud, you are teaching. You are, you are laying a wrong foundation. You are setting the wrong Peace. And I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may every man just humble before God. Humble before God. Don't forget what the Lord has done. Don't forget those days when things were not work working. Don't forget those seasons when even you are starting life together with that woman. You, you, you had nothing at all and your independence was, was always on God. But right now God has done something. God has just opened few doors and there are things that you are affording you cannot afford. So you have become arrogant. You no longer pray. You no longer join your hands because you don't have time. You have, you have been engaged in many other things that are not necessary. I pray God to help us in the name of the Lord. You can also read in Ephesians chapter number 2, uh, chapter 4, verse 2 to 3, and James chapter number 4, verse 5 to 6. And number 5, we got something very important. God makes many couples not to take care of each other. It is when you feel you are doing more than your partner. You feel you are doing more. <laughs> when you feel you are doing more, some people become uh, arrogant. They want to be worshipped. If it's not because of me, if it, it's not because of me. So there, 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 there even some people, uh, because you are a point of connection, you connected your husband to, 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 to that business, you connected him to that company. So every time in the evening you want this man to worship you. You want him to bow. Can't you, don't you remember if, if, if I did not talk to so and so, if I did not do this and this. So it becomes an issue. If the Lord blesses you and he decides to make you a way so that you can be a blessing to your family, whatever you are getting, if you have become a source of or, or a point of 
contact. The Lord has just uh, caused you to be a point of contact so that you can attract his favor. You can attract his blessings. You need to uh, thank God. You should not brag. You should not be proud. And you should not humiliate your, 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 your partner. Even if you are the best honor. In, in, in your family, maybe you are a wife, you are, the, you are the, the person who is earning a lot of money more than your husband. Maybe you are, you, you are ranked in a higher position as a wife and you are, you, are, you are doing a lot of things in your marriage. Thank God for that. And don't, don't humiliate the other person because it is the grace. The moment you acknowledge it is by the grace. It's not by the papers that you have. It's not by hard work. This is the time you give God glory. And whenever you uh, accord or you give God glory that is due to his name, then he sustains you. There are, there are many couples who have felt that I am the one who has done this. If, I, if it's not because of it, there are people even who remind their husbands 10 years after their marriage. Can't you remember? Mm -hmm. Even during our wedding, uh, many, many resources came through me. I, I had a bigger circle than, a, <laughs> a bigger circle of people. Yeah? Those who supported our wedding, have you forgotten so quickly? So now, now why? No, why? Why bring the issues of our wedding? Yes, your family, your friends, they were well up and God used them. Now, why, why bring such issues now? So there are people, every time you humiliate the other person, if that power of darkness uh, knocks in, in, in your mind at the gate of your mind and uh, that stronghold is built, and it becomes very hard to take care of each other. And there are couples who have withdrawn their support. You have withdrawn your help. You have withdrawn what you're supposed to do, which is very, very wrong. Please, I beg you in the name of Jesus, check out how you are handling your partner. Check out how you are handling your wife. Check out how you are handling your husband. Please, I beg you in the, in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray may you go back to the things that you are doing. We were given a testimony of a wife who was dying of cancer. The, the husband never knew. The best thing that this man was doing is just to uh, have some another relationship outside the, and the wife is dying and he, he, he does not know. And uh, the plan is I want to divorce this woman and remarry. But the moment the wife proposed if you begin to do what you are doing, just lifting me from our table room to our bedroom and carrying me in the morning the way you are doing, then uh, after a few months, I'll, I'll just sign the, the divorce papers. And when the man did that for one month, laugh was triggered. So some of us, is, is, the love is not dead. It is because that love is not being worked upon. Whatever you are not working uh, uh, upon, you, you are preparing to fail whatever you are not practicing you cannot perfect if you are not practicing to love to speak good things towards your spouse you are preparing to fail in that area so practice makes more perfect now begin to do what you are doing when you are starting your marriage relationship and uh, verse 6 we understood it's when you move away from your marriage vision mm -hmm. and many people are lost we talked about maintaining the vision as a topic many people are lost they the, the moment you shift from the vision that brought you together then uh it it it, it attracts a disaster it attracts disaster i i, I always uh learn from paul paul in chapter number nine he is arrested when he was uh, pursuing the people who are on the way, the disciples, the apostles, when he was pursuing them. And you, you, many of us, you understand the story. When he was almost entering Damascus, Jesus arrests him, and this man is converted. And uh, he begins the journey of walking with God. In chapter number 26, this is what I like most. Because he is speaking to King Agrippa and he's telling the king, I have not abandoned the heavenly vision. If you forsake or you begin to operate away from the heavenly vision that you received, that you conceived, understand for any vision to materialize, you must perceive that vision. After perceiving it, you are supposed to conceive that vision. After conceiving the vision, you are supposed also to believe in that vision. 
when you believe in the vision, then you are qualified to receive that vision. So many couples, they perceived the vision. You saw the future in this man. You saw the, uh, the, the future in this woman. And some of them, they went to level two of conceiving the vision. Yes. Even when you are being forced to separate during courtship, you said, no, 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 no. I have a future in this man. I have a future in this woman. That is conceiving and you can defend that vision. And when it came to the level uh, of uh, believing in that vision, some, of, uh, some people begin to be shaky. Others, they, they can believe. But now receiving, it is a problem because many do not persist. Many do not uh, uh, endure until they see the vision come to pass. So the, the secret of maintaining the vision, first of all, uh, in Abakuk chapter number two, Abakuk, he was a complaining man. So away from the vision, you become a complainer.